Hello and welcome. In this video I will talk about the Ponagotchi and how it is using DOS frames to increase the number of handshakes it is able to capture. So the idea of the Ponagotchi is that it captures as much handshakes or key material as possible. And to do that there are different ways. So there is a passive way, so the Ponagotchi could just stay on a channel and listen until a new client connects to the network or to, to one of the networks, which channel he's on. Um, yeah, he can hop the channels and wait for a new client. But depending on the area where you are, so how many clients are connected to the network and also some, if you're there at the right time or not, it might need minutes, hours or even days until you are able to capture a handshake. Because if you have a silent network with only a slow number of clients, there might be only a handful of handshakes per day. And yeah, your Ponogotchi can only capture on one channel at a time. So there's the risk that the client connects on channel one and is uh, exchanging a four-way handshake with the access point. But this time your Ponogotchi is on channel 11. In that case, you would miss it and need to wait another couple of hours or for the next client. So to speed up the handshake collection, there's a concept of DOS frames. In, in the Wi-Fi world until today, majority of uh, access points and clients do, do use very unsecure uh, management frames. So there's no protection in that. That means the Ponagotchi or any other device or software can uh, yeah, impersonate itself as access point or client and tell the other uh, station that the session is disconnected and no longer valid. So there are frames called disassociation frame and deauthentication frame in the Wi-Fi world, which is usually the idea of the, the, that the AP or the client tells the AP that the session is no longer valid and it shall disconnect. It shall only be used by the stations itself. But due to the fact that this one is not secured, everyone can spoof that. So you see the MAC addresses in clear text of the stations in the air and you just pick the address of the client or AP and send these frames. That might be illegal in some countries, it depends, but the good thing is the Ponogotchi only does it once per station or something like that. It does not flood that all the time. There are attacks out there where some people are sending these DOS frames to everyone, so as a broadcast for hours and hours, so they really kill entire networks. That's not what the Ponogotchi is doing. The Ponogotchi just deauses as long until he gets a handshake and then he's happy and, and leaves the client and then goes on. How can someone uh, defend against such a tech? Since more than 10 years, there's a wireless standard. It's called 802.11w which can be used to protect against uh, that kind of attacks. It secures the management frames. Unfortunately, even 10 years after uh, yeah, get, having that standard, it's still not used by all access point vendors and clients. There are some incompatibilities. So if you enable that standard, some old legacy clients with bad software or drivers are not able to connect. For that reason and also laziness, a lot of people do not use that at all. That might change in the future with WPA3 because there it is a mandatory feature. So it is required for the, for the clients to get the Wi-Fi certified that they su support that. So or it's, it's, yeah, it's in the standard. So in the future, we might see it more often. But today, especially with WPA2, nearly no one uses protected management frames. Um, what about detection? How high is the risk that someone notices that you send the auth frames? For private users, probably it's nearly impossible to yeah, find you because yeah, if the session is disconnected once per week, no one will care because majority of the clients reconnect really fast with just one, two seconds delay. So majority of users will never notice that they get de especially if it's only once. But for companies, um, there are tools like wireless intrusion detection or prevention systems which look for that kind of uh, yeah, DOS or impersonation attacks. So these systems could detect such attacks and alarm. So if an administrator has a lot of time and such an expensive system in his network, he might be able to see, oh, there is a DOS attack running in that in that area and 
yeah, he could go there and look if he finds something suspicious. Okay, but that's enough to the to the background. So we know the Ponagachi is using DOS frames by default. So he's jumping the channels, looking for APs, and if necessary, he sends DOS to speed up the handshake process. If you do not want to do that, so if you want to be more friendly to your neighbors or to your own networks, whatever, you can configure the uh, the Ponagachi in the config YML file file. You can scroll down to uh, whitelist. Here we have the whitelist, and here you can uh, configure the networks you don't want to attack. So you just enter the networks names here, home, Wi Fi, whatever. You can use your names. Um, if you have any special characters or spaces, you shall use quotes. If you have just standard names, you don't need them. And you can add here a uh, a long list of networks. You can also um, add, if you have it, you can add the BSSID of your access point, whatever you have. You can also use partial values. So, yeah, everything is open here. So yeah, start to whitelist your neighbors and your home networks. Then in that case, the Ponagotchi will not actively uh, yeah, attack them. It will not send DOS frames. You will still see uh, in your handshake folder, you will still see your home network, your whitelisted networks, because the Ponagachi can still passively collect the handshake. So if he's on the same channel, when a client is connecting, you will have that handshake even for whitelisted network. Um, you can also, for your home networks, you can also, uh, or yeah, you could also add them to the grid. If you don't want to have them reported into the grid, you can copy and paste the list from below to here and add them here. That would be one way. I think that's the recommended way to whitelist neighboring networks. But you could also completely disable the DOR thing. So in the personality section of the configuration, you can set DORs to false. And then the Ponagachi will completely stop de-authing anyone. So it will be really friendly and no one will be disturbed by the Ponagachi. But at the same time, you will um, yeah, drastically reduce the number of handshakes you capture. But if you plan to have your Ponagachi on your desk or all, all the time around you and you just want to yeah, see its cute face, look, uh, show it to others, you can enable that. Uh, and you do not disturb others. So you, you can do that. Yeah. That's the way. Um, I will show you what's happening um, while the authentication. I, I captured uh, some packets on channel one in, in the air and the yellow packets you see here, this is a four-way handshake. That's between the Amazon Fire TV stick I have at home and this is what the Ponagotchi is looking for. The Ponagotchi wants to have these four packets or some of them. It does not need all of them. It's enough if it has some of them because they include that key material which the Ponagotchi wants to have. We have these nonce uh, values here. This is what the Ponagotchi is looking for. So here we see that the Fire TV stick did a new authentication. So we also see here the authentication frames in purple. And we see association request, association response, and then the handshake. Yeah, that's what the Ponogachi is looking for. But in that case, the Fire TV stick did not decide by its, or it did not randomly connect to the network. It was forced, forced by the Ponogachi before. So if I scroll up, or I, I filtered here on the uh, WLAN address of my Fire TV stick, and I also included some egg frames from the access point to have better visibility. What I see here, um, starting all these red frames are all the authentication frames. And I can scroll here for a quite long time because the Ponogachi sent massive amount of DOS frames. So what it is doing, the Ponogachi is copying, you can see in the source field, it is using the MAC address of my access point and the destination is the MAC address of my Fire TV stick. And it's sending the auth frames to tell, yeah, in that case from the AP to the client, yeah, your session is no longer valid, please leave. You see that couple of times that are retry frames. So every Wi-Fi frame, which is not acknowledged is retransmitted. So you can see there, there was no egg or it was not received. So it's resending the same, same frame again and again until it's acknowledged. So for example, here we see another DOS frame from the Fire TV stick to the, 
to the router, it's the DOS and it's immediately acknowledged. But anyhow, the it's it's sending it again and again. So either the egg was not received or it's just the behavior of the Ponagotchi. So you see a lot of these frames and both directions. And yeah, depending on your clients, some clients recover quite, can some clients are even smart enough. They ignore these kind of DOS attacks depending on their driver. Or if they, what I mentioned before, that management frame protection standard, standard 802.11w, if they use it, they are safe. So nothing can happen to them. But other clients who care about these, these DOS attacks, it depends on the client itself, how heavily they are affected. In my case, the Fire TV stick only needs two seconds to reconnect. So it, it needs a long time until he really cares about these DOS frames. So it's three, four seconds or something like that. And after it is DOSed, it's moving into, yeah, again, network discovery. So it's old session is disconnected. So the Fire TV stick has to check which networks are available. So he's sending wildcast, wildcard probe requests. So looking which networks are available. And then neighboring access points reply to him. Oh, yeah, probe response. I have this network and this network. So he gets an overview, a network map. You might know that from the devices when you search for networks. That's happening here. And then he's selecting his network and connecting. And in my case, that needs from the last, say, let's last DOS frame, 825 seconds till we have the packet number four of the four-way handshake and also we can look for first traffic it's yeah two and a half seconds more so that's what my fire tv is the stick needed to reconnect um, so two and a half seconds majority of users will never notice but there might be legacy devices with bad drivers they might need 10 seconds maybe even minutes to reconnect because they are stuck or whatever so the authoring the effect really depends on the on the client device. Yeah, that's what I wanted to show you. So if you want to have a, a more friendly Ponagotchi, set DOS either to false or add as much networks to the whitelist as possible. And to remind you, even if you have them whitelisted, you might still see passive handshakes in your handshake folder. That's all from my side. If you're interested in further Wi-Fi videos or Ponagotchi videos, subscribe to my channel. I will upload more soon. See you. Bye.